we're going to start out by adding a procedural terrain to the scene. And we're going to go ahead and edit the object and open up the terrain editor. Uh, now we're going to go over to the procedural tab and we can right click and edit the function. Uh, another way to open the function editor is to control click. Uh, and that way you don't have to right click and edit the function. Uh, now we're going to take this current fractal and uh, right here uh, where it says fractal node we have the option to choose between all of the different types of fractals. Uh, we're going to go ahead and select the eroded rocky mountains and now because of the multiply by constant uh, with this node you end up with something uh, really large. So we're just going to go ahead and decrease that multiply by constant to about 16. Uh, what we could also do is modify the largest feature. Uh, but because of the multiply uh, increases the output of each fractal, uh, the numbers we were looking at before were incredibly high. Uh, so if we multiplied that by 128, and then increased the largest feature scale, uh, we have an output of beyond 18. Uh, in the function node preview, uh, there's an extension, uh, if automatic extension is turned on, and it'll uh, input a number that is going to be uh, the, the full range, uh, provided that it's outside of 1 or negative 1. So in this case, it's 18. Uh, it is grayed out. Uh, because the automatic extension is on, but you can look at that and see the highest output. Uh, so really, in this case, I would want to bring this down because I, I just want to have the output um, so that it's not so dense. It's a little easier to see uh, in the preview. Now there's some options uh, for the function editor too. Uh, if we go to the upper left, uh, we can go to the preview options. And then we can choose from here how we'd like to display the fractals. Right now I'm using the 2D plane. Uh, we could also look at it on an XY plane, uh, which really isn't compatible with the eroded Rocky Mountain, um, at least the output that we're using right now. And I'll show you that in a second. Uh, we could also look at it as a terrain sphere. Uh, 2D planes, I think, is probably the best for editing terrains because all you're really doing with the terrain, uh, the procedural, it's a slice of an area of the terrain. So it takes the fractal and cuts through it and then uses that information to develop the height of the terrain. So 2D plane works best. Uh, we can also manipulate the object size. In this case, it's not really going to matter because we're not using a world coordinate. Um, it'll automatically lock to the parametric size or uh, the actual size of the terrain. And then we can also choose the background color. Um, but since we're using 2D plane, the background color doesn't really affect this. Now, because I replaced uh, the current fractal, the default, with this one, uh, the link to the output was made automatically. If we go ahead and delete the link just by selecting the line and now reconnect it, uh, it's going to give us a list of all the available outputs. There's the uh, altitude, which is uh, a zero to z vector. So z offset has no impact on it. Uh, the information is basically projected onto a plane, uh, which is why it wasn't working, uh, the preview wasn't working in the XY plane mode. And if we modify the Z origin, uh, normally it will cycle through the fractal. Um, but with this uh, specific output, it does not. And this is really the only uh, type of fractal besides the regular Rocky Mountains uh, that has this type of output. Uh, so if I go into the origin of the X and enter in a number, then we can see it shifts the fractal on the X axis.
Same thing with y. Uh, z is null in this case. If you want to use the full 3D version, then when you connect to the output, use the evaluate in 3D. Uh, calculating this fractal at render time can be pretty intensive. Uh, so they, Eon does suggest that you use this for uh, planetary terrains, which uses uh, more of a displacement type slice, uh, it's a spherical slice, which you would need 3D information for. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't use it uh, within the terrain editor. Uh, once we switch over, you'll find that the Z origin can now be uh, manipulated. So it gives you a lot more control. Uh, it does take a little longer to process in some cases, uh, but it can be worth it if you're looking for more advanced uh, manipulation of this fractal, because it is pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch this back to the altitude. Uh, the other outputs, uh, rough areas and the rough area for 3D and the distance to ridge are for materials uh, using custom outputs. And we'll take a look at those uh, in just a little bit. Uh, so most of the controls for this fractal are pretty straightforward. Uh, some major uh, changes or uh, factors for this fractal are the distortion. Uh, stretch factor is something that has a different impact on the eroded Rocky Mountains than the regular Rocky Mountains. And then we can also switch this over to the regular Rocky Mountain. And when we take a look at the stretch factor, it's uh, a lot different. Uh, it doesn't really move along uh, the shapes that are creating uh, the peaks. And with the eroded Rocky Mountains, uh, the stretch factor is pulled out down towards the ground. So you can uh, create some pretty interesting effects with it. Uh, with the Rocky Mountain um, fractals, it's a good idea to stay away from uh, the meta scale uh, because the roughness for it is really not intense enough uh, in order to make something realistic. Uh, bringing it up to 15, uh, and also want to note that the meta scale has to be at higher than the largest feature in order for it to show up at all. Uh, what it is is a second level of uh, the fractal being applied uh, with other fractals when you're using it. A good way to think of it is the largest feature is the mountain size and uh, the meta scale would be uh, mountain range uh, size. Uh, so with the Rocky Mountains, it's a good idea to just, if you're going to use it, uh, just add a little bit over the largest feature amount. And that way you don't uh, get any kind of strange roughness in it. And what it does is, in this case, is it's going to vary uh, the elevation of the different features. And as long as we don't get too high with it, uh, the lack of roughness won't matter too much. Uh, if we go over to the overall aspect and uh, turn off separate mountains and go back to the meta scale, uh, you can also see that the meta scale layer is not really affected by that separate mountain uh, option. Uh, so that can also create uh, some interesting looking uh, features. Now to control the smaller features, 
uh, we can go back to the overall aspect area. Uh, and what we'll find is an iteration count. Uh, and basically this fractal will apply different levels of detail. Uh, so the iteration is the level of detail and how many times uh, it's being applied. Basically it starts with a very large feature if we bring it down to two. And then uh, as we add, add the next level, it'll subtract from that uh, main peaks or those main sets of peaks and then continue along uh, removing more and more information uh, as it erodes down to the ground. Uh, depending on the scale factor, uh, large iteration counts typically aren't necessary. And we'll just go ahead and zoom out a little bit here. Uh, the scale uh, is going to change those smaller features and uh, basically reduce their scale the more you increase the scale factor. Uh, so if you have a smaller scale factor, you can sometimes see the effects a bit more of uh, the iteration count. Uh, there's kind of a threshold level that you'll find. And then the flat level per uh, iteration uh, is how much uh, erosion is being applied, basically, or subtraction. Um, at the point of the removal of the detail. The base roughness is set to 0.4 by default. You can raise this in order to make all of the features uh, more defined. Uh, which sometimes is needed, uh, but you will notice uh, undesirable sharp peaks if you get too high, and you can notice a little more tearing uh, sometimes. Uh, we also have the option uh, to add rocks and you can choose uh, at which detail level uh, you want to add these rocks. Uh, at least uh, up to level 5. Uh, even if you increase the iteration count, it won't really let you go uh, much higher. And that's because you really won't see the rocks uh, at the lower levels, or there'll be so many of them, it'll be uh, a lot of sharp, jagged edges. Uh, so we could adjust the height of the rocks, so if you want to see really where the rocks are at, you can just raise that up higher than the slider uh, to see kind of where their influence is. Uh, so we can also adjust the roughness. Uh, so you can get a very rough jagged rock out of that as well. And then we can move it down the iteration. And now see the rocks start to show uh, at number three in the smaller details. Uh, as you move down um, or higher in, in the iteration count for the rocks, uh, you typically would need to reduce the height if you're kind of moving from rocks from one level to another. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now I do have zero edges turned on. Uh, so it is uh, removing uh, the detail, multiplying it by zero basically around the edges. I'm going to go ahead and just move the camera out here. 
And uh, before I place a material on this, I do want to show you just kind of what the geometry looks like uh, with just this basic default material. Uh, so I'm just going to set up a quick render in lower quality settings. Now, beside the area, or besides the area that had the rocks applied, uh, there's really not a lot of detail uh, within this type of fractal. It's a really great way to create these types of features, uh, but it does lack detail. Uh, there are t ways uh, to improve the detail. Uh, which we're going to take a look at in just a sec. I just want to go ahead and get a different angle. Uh, maybe go into our sunlight, adjust the orientation. Uh, just adjusting the yaw or the heading. Uh, so this is from uh, just another angle. You can still see a lot of smoothing uh, overall. I'm going to go ahead and just increase the height just a little bit. Uh, so this, if you're going to use it in this state, uh, it's going to rely heavily on a material bump in order to add any sort of detail to it. Uh, because the fractal is generating um, something that would typically be incredibly large, uh, the details uh, and the smaller feature details we would see uh, would definitely not be as defined uh, as the rest of the mountain. Uh, but there are some cool ways to add uh, and pick up the detail overall. Now I'm going to go ahead and save uh, the scene at this state and then we can uh, add another level of detail. So we're going to go ahead and open up the train editor and uh, edit the function. Uh, control clicking on it uh, on the preview to open the editor. And then if we need a, a better preview we can turn off the only when saturating option in order to show a lot more detail and we'll stretch it out. We can zoom in with the scale options and this is all within the output observer uh, up at the top. Uh, now an easy way to add some detail uh, would be to add another fractal and we're gonna go to the vector link up at the top and connect it from the vector 3 seed uh, to the multiply by constant. Now because it's also duplicating that node already, uh, because it was the last one selected, uh, since we're going to have that effect anyway, there's an easier way where we can control C to copy, control V to paste, and then it'll automatically connect to that. So they can save you a little bit of time if you're working fast. Uh, you can also use the copy and paste commands at the top. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and switch this second one over to a terrain fractal. And we're going to select the link, uh, the blue link, which represents numeric data. Uh, once that is selected, we can go over here to the left and add a combiner node. Uh, make sure it is set to the blender. With input 0 uh, connected to the eroded Rocky Mountains, and input 1 we can connect to the terrain fractal. So now with this uh, setup, we're blending, because uh, our combination mode is set to blend. And we're just kind of overlaying one on top of the other. Uh, if we go all the way to a value of 1, we're going to see just input 1, which is the terrain fractal. So at 0, the ratio is the eroded Rocky Mountains. We can also modify uh, our combination mode. We can multiply uh, the two inputs. We could subtract one from the other. Uh, set up a minimum, uh, so it takes the lowest point of information or the top, and that's going to depend on which uh, is input 1, which is input 0. Uh, we could also just add the detail directly to it, 
Uh, so let's go ahead and just add about half. And if you go to the terrain fractal, um, just go ahead and stick with the default settings for now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cancel the render. Uh, the output for the terrain fractal is much lower. Uh, so adding it uh, was not quite enough. We can go into the terrain fractal and increase the gain. Uh, we can also reduce the largest feature size. And also adjust the smooth area altitude. We'll go ahead and take a look at that. And now, uh, because of the scale change, we are going a bit below the ground. So I'm just going to lift this up, and I do have the lock camera turned on, uh, lock height option. Uh, so it just moves the ca camera up with it. Uh, so we're still not getting a whole lot of detail uh, from this simple mix. Uh, there's a kind of a cool technique I like to use uh, for this kind of setup. And that is uh, to, instead of using a blender, we're going to connect to the altitude output of the terrain fractal and control uh, a portion of the terrain fractal with the rotor Rocky Mountains. And the best for this is the gain. Because uh, the gain works uh, differently than other fractals within a terrain fractal because of the smooth areas uh, and the variation that's built in. Uh, typically a gain will just kind of multiply the output uh, in other fractals, but Rocky Mountain fractal, or sorry, the uh, terrain fractal, the gain from 0 to 1 uh, is different than uh, what would happen from 1 to 2. Uh, you kind of reach a a different layer. So what I'm going to do is disconnect the gain uh, with a little lightning bolt looking symbol and we can take the link on this constant node that was created and just want to grab and click right at the bottom and then we can move it over onto the altitude output of the Rocky Mountains. Now because the output is very low uh, and we're going below zero, uh, we're just going to null the gain on the terrain fractal, we do need to raise it up. So I'm going to select that link again, add a filter, and let's go ahead and just set this to map. Because uh, we can offset and do a variety of different things with the map filter without having to add a whole bunch of extra filters. Because uh, offset, we could just raise it up directly to whatever output we want. But with a map filter, we can take an input value uh, negative one to one and we're actually going between around uh, 0.1 or so or 0.25 to negative one um, uh, so when we look at the output range we're taking the negative one and setting it to zero and the upper value we have set to one but because the upper value input isn't set to the highest point it's a lot higher then the output's really around 0.5 so if we set this to say 0.2 uh, then it's going to be much closer to the upper value output uh, if we go over and you have the automatic extension turned on uh, you'll see the extension go above 1 so I know that this number isn't high enough so 0.25 still not enough so we'll go ahead and do 0.3 uh, so now what we can do is set our our gain. If we want to start with 1 uh, for the lower value, and then we could set it up to 3, or we could do up to 20. Uh, we could do some very high values with this. And we could also reduce the lower portion needed. It's a good idea to keep it above zero, at least above zero, and because we're not clipping any out-of-range values, anything that might fall below negative one uh, will cause a negative, and that can kind of cancel out parts of the terrain.
now because that extension never went outside of one when we were just setting it before and looking at the uh, automatic extension I know that if I type in 0.1 it is uh, not going to fall below uh, zero at all but we'll go ahead and set that to 0.5 or maybe even a slightly higher value we can do uh, two or three and that's going to pull up more of the ground Now we do have uh, a lot more information in the center. Uh, also, the overall output is higher than it was before, so the zero edges uh, will look different. So we can go back and add another filter before the final output just to reduce that. Uh, but I think I'm just going to set the lower value to 0.5 and this upper value, uh, we'll do 6 for now. It's still a little high. Uh, before, our output was negative 1 to about 0. And now, we have an output of 1 to 0. So we're going to add a filter, offset. And we're just going to offset it just about negative 1. And that should return our features uh, to more minimal amount in the center. I'm go ahead and bring that up to say 8 for the map. Now there's going to be a lot more variation than there was before because of the terrain fractal. Let's go ahead and take a look at a render. A uh, little more detail, still a lot of smooth areas. And that could actually, uh, somewhat because by the zero edges, uh, but for the most part, I think we need to adjust some of the settings uh, within the terrain fractal. So we could change our noise type uh, without trying to invert it. Uh, and this is one thing that happens with the gain. Uh, it has a very large impact with the smooth area altitude and uh, using the billows mode. Let me just go ahead and zoom in so we can take a look and see the detail a lot better. And what we could also do is remove the metascale at that higher level and just work with something a little lower uh, in order to generate more detail. So with the billows mode it is a little more blobby Uh, but that does look pretty cool. So we could also use the ridge mode and get something a little sharper. Uh, removing the metascale really helped because uh, we were basically dealing with uh, two larger features where what we want to do right now is create detail so we need something a little bit smaller. But I'm going to switch that back to the billows mode because I kind of like the way that looked. Although we may need to uh, reduce the elevation a bit of some of those peaks because they're going to be pretty sharp and jagged. Uh, so it's looking a little better. I'm going to go ahead and save it out at this point. Now, one thing that is actually causing a lot of the smoothing is the zeroing of the edge uh, because of where the camera is at right now. And I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of it, store the camera with a little disk over here, a disk icon in the camera control center. Um, because we're so close to the edge, uh, pretty much all the detail is getting removed. Uh, as we move our way more towards the middle, we're going to see a lot more detail. Uh, we also have an area in the center that is dropped down uh, too far. So what we can do is go back to that offset within the function and just raise it up a little bit. Uh, we could also use uh, sometimes a force extension 
and sometimes that'll change uh, the way the zero edges are applied. And looks like in this case it's best just to keep it automatic and leave that off. So now we'll just lift it up just a little bit more. And I'm going to grab the sunlight and light this area of the scene. Uh, so my sun's currently set to 123 for the pitch, 40 for the roll, and uh, 295 for the yaw. Uh, and what I'm going to do right now, uh, just kind of balance out the lighting for the moment, is so I'm going to go double-click on the camera to open up the advanced camera options, click Edit for the gamma, and enable the gamma correction, set it to 2.2. Turn off the natural film response. And go back to the sunlight. And just kind of lower the pitch and make it set a little bit more. Uh, and now you can see a much bigger difference between the, the original Rocky Mountain uh, fractal on its own and running it through the terrain fractal, which adds just so much detail to it. Uh, there's a lot more things you can do with it.